We're following multiple breaking stories, including actress Felicity Huffman sentenced to 14 days in prison for her role in what authorities say is the largest college admissions cheating scam ever prosecuted. Let's go to CNN national correspondent Miguel Marquez. Tell us what happened in court today, Miguel. Yeah, 14 days in prison, one year supervised, re supervised release, a $30,000 fine, 250 hours of community service. All of that will send an unmistakable message to others charged in the scandal whose cases will be heard in this same courthouse. Felicity Huffman hand in hand with her husband, actor William H. Macy, entering a federal courthouse in Boston to learn her fate. Huffman addressing the court through tears. She apologized to the judge, her daughters, and husband, saying she's ashamed of her behavior, recounting how one of her daughters told her, I don't know who you are anymore, Malam. She also said she was driving her daughter to the testing center. She thought to herself, turn around, just turn around. And to my eternal shame, she says, I did it. Huffman concluded by saying she takes full responsibility. All praises to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rakakadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, and salutation to the hopeful elect out there, pushing the word in all truth and sincerity. Just want to, uh, man, when I saw this, 14 days, uh, I had to make a video about it because it, uh, it, uh, there's another lady you'll see later on in this segment, uh, uh, Jake, who, uh, who, who uh, they're trying to send her, send her for five years for trying to uh, vote. So let's just jump right in the scripture on this. This is uh, the book of Ezekiel, chapter 9, verse 4. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. And yes, that's what we're doing out here, brothers. We're coming out here, and we're sighing and crying for all these abominations, man, because this this, this this is not right, man. It's not right that these people are continuously to get away with uh, these unrighteous laws and decrees, man. Let's uh, move over to... Uh, for the Move over to the book of Psalms. Psalm 73 verse 5. Where it reads. They are not in trouble as other men. Neither are they plagued like other men. Therefore pride compasses them about as a chain. Violence covers them as a garment. Because they, they, the Edomites, they've always had everything, you know, because this is their kingdom, of course. So they just feel like they can get away with anything. Uh, and, you know, that's fine. But then on top of that, they throw us under the bus, man, every time. They throw the Jakes under the bus every time. Make us, you know, make us feel like we, we have done something wrong. So this is our punishment. So... That's why it's time for us to repent and come back to the Lord, the true power of the Lord, man, and, and uh, get back to the kingdom, to our protection, because we're just going to get devoured out here, man, okay? We're going we're gonna to read one more scripture, and then we're going to go to the second segment, the second video, okay, y'all? This is Isaiah verse, uh, 10, verse 1. It says, Woe unto them! that decree unrighteous decrees and right grievous which they have prescribed. It says to turn aside the needy from judgment and to take away the right from the poor of my people the widows may be their prey and that they may rob the fatherless. Now you're gonna see in this next video what I'm talking about. Let's, let's, go, uh, let's go straight on into this next video man. But you see how they just give this lady 14 days in prison for for this what she did now everybody know should know what she done by now this lady uh, done bribed the school system and paid them some money to get her child in the college you know what I'm saying now that's a, that's just that's fraud man 14 days when you had your sentence handed down 
I was expecting for the judge to see that um, listening to my supervised release officer, the supervisor, um, listening, listening to the story when he stated that I, I was never told and as well as I never f signed anything stating that I was ineligible to vote. You thought you were expecting that he would have heard that and that would have weighed on him and he would have taken that from your supervisor as, as gospel, really? Correct, yes, ma'am. So there's a lot of people who are following your case and they point out that there have been similar cases to yours, two in particular where the defendants were white. One of them who voted twice for Donald Trump. Uh, these defendants did not get any jail time, only probation. And there are a number of observers here who look at your case and they think that race is at play. Do you think race is at play? At this moment right now, I'm just trusting that I, my, my attorneys gave uh, great facts when I was in my appeal court just on the tent. So I'm just trusting that the judge will review everything and everything will come out. Yeah, I had to stop it right there. You see, uh, so this is what I'm talking about right here. So they're trying to get this poor lady five years. Now, she done did something wrong before, and she was already in jail. They already done took her from her kids and family because of the curses. You know, she's on the curse. You can't be able to see your family and stuff. I'm going to show you all a family photo of these people. And we're going to look. Where are the, the, the husbands? These are like uh, the, the the generations. You can see the generations, but then there's no there's no men around except for the, the children. Uh, but that, that's the curses again. Uh, but as you can see, what she said, she said... Um, She's just hoping, so she's hoping in Esau to, to just have mercy on her, which we know they, they will not do that. Now, they don't care about that woman. But then, even when the lady asked her, do you think racism has a play in it? She couldn't answer that question, and so she's just been all as, as humble as she can be and hoping for the best within with, with these people. Because she has not uh, considered the turn to the Lord. Uh, let's, let's read... Uh, Let's read Isaiah. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 31, verse 1. Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help, and stay on horses and trust in chariots because they are many, and in horsemen because they are very strong, but they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek the Lord. These people, they, they still trust in oppression. That would be the one. Yeah, that's a good scripture to bring out. But they trust in oppression. They still trust in Babylon to... Um, to, to get them out of the thing that Babylon is actually the one, the culprit of putting them in these situations as well. Hold on one second. I'm going to bring up that picture, uh, the family picture, real quick. Where does this go from here? So right now, the judges are deliberating Crystal's case, and we are believing that based upon the facts and evidence that we presented on appeal they will overturn crystal's conviction uh they crystal did not vote and she submitted a provisional ballot that wasn't ever counted she also did not know that she was ineligible or that she would be declared ineligible in tarrant county because that's still Now, on one hand, we're looking at, at these, this family, this Jake's here, and you know, we, we look at look at the brother. He's wearing a cross around his neck. Oh, you telling me not one of these people done heard about the Israelites? Let's go to Second Ezra chapter nine, verse nine. Then shall they be in a pitiful case, which now have abused my ways, and they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torment. For such as in their life have received benefits and have not known me. That's right, because the Lord's always been taking care of the people, man. And, but now this is the time that he's making himself known. And we're supposed to turn back to the Lord and repent. They have not known me. And they that have loathed my law while they yet had liberty. And when as yet place of repentance was open unto them, understood not, but despised it. The same must know it after death by pain. And then it goes on to say, And therefore be thou not curious how the ungodly shall be punished, and when, but inquire how the righteous shall be saved. Whose the world is, 
and for whom the world was created. So the world was created for the righteous anyway. We're just going through these things here. The birth pains right here, baby. Just seeing all these all these things coming to pass. And uh, our brothers and sisters, you know, uh, been dealt a hand like this. But look, we're going to go ahead and we're going to read... Uh, We're going to read Ecclesiastes chapter 5 or 7. Okay. For anybody out there with an ear. This is Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 7. It says, Make no tarry to turn to the Lord, and put not off from day to day. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth, and in thy security thou shalt be destroyed, and perish in the day of vengeance. So set not thine heart upon goods unjustly gotten, for they shall not profit thee in the day of calamity. Alright? So it's time to repent, you brothers and sisters out there, and find out who the Lord really is and what he wants wants for you. Now, we're going to go back to the uh, beginning and get back on Esau over here. A man whose brother was shot to death by a Dallas police officer for giving his brother's killer and embracing her. If you truly are sorry, I know I can speak for myself. I, I forgive you. And I know if you go to God and ask him, he will forgive you. And I don't think anyone could say it. Again, I'm speaking for myself, not even bad for my family. But I love you just like anyone else. And I'm not gonna say I hope you rot and die just like my brother did, but I see, I, I personally want the best for you. And I, I wasn't gonna ever say this in front of my family or anyone, but I don't even want you to go to jail. I want the best for you. Because I know that's, what, that's exactly what both of them would want you to do. And the best would be give your life to Christ. I'm not going to say anything else. I think giving your life to Christ would be the best thing that both of them would want you to do. Again, I love you as a person. And I don't wish anything bad on you. I don't know if this is possible, but can can I give her a hug, please? Please? Yes. And the judge also hugging that former officer, Amber Geiger, and giving her a Bible after sentencing her to 10 years behind bars for her apartment and thought he was an intruder. Let's bring in Jonathan Morris, Fox News contributor, theologian, and ethicist, because uh, you can help us uh, think about this going forward in our own lives, right? Now, this is a prime example of those Israelites who, who, think, who don't know they're Israelites worshiping the beast. This is the book of Revelations, chapter 13, verse 11. And I beheld another beast coming out, coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spoke as a dragon. And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him, and caused the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And deceiveth them that dwell in the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image of the beast which had the wound by the sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the beast, the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. 
that the image of the beast is the um it's the philosophies of this is the, uh, this wicked world throughout the, from the Roman Empire. So this is the this is the second uh, this is the revised Roman em Empire, the uh, Babylon society here, and it's got all these people, everybody on the planet Earth, thinking that it's uh, some righteous thing, but but uh, through the word of the of the Most High. Everyone's about to see that this this is actually the devil that the, that the Bible speaks of, and these people, these Israelites, have not because they have not turned and sought sought the face of the Lord. They they have no idea that they're even worshiping the mark of the beast. This is going along with the program, but that's also uh, you know because they have not turned. They have not turned. We're gonna read. Uh, we're gonna go to the apocrypha. This is the book of the Apocrypha of First Maccabees, uh, chapter one, verse forty-one. Moreover, King Antioch, Antioch uh, wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people, and everyone should leave his his laws. So all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. Yea, many also of the Israelites consented consented to his religion, and sacrificed unto idols and profaned the Sabbath. But the king had said letters. Well, that's that's about it. That's all I wanted to bring out right there. It says, "Yea, many also of the Israelites consent consented to his religion and sacrificed unto idols and profaned the Sabbath." So, who was giving the law, statutes, and commandments? The Israelites. Who's supposed to keep the laws and who lo who's supposed to keep the law, statutes, and commandments? The Israelites. They're sacrificing the idols. They're believing in the system and not returning to the Father. Not, not, not returning to the Lord, the Most High. The how about Hashem Yahweh Shai. So therefore, uh, they are partakers. They're going to be partakers in drinking in the cup of wrath when the Lord comes back. That's, that's as simple as that, okay? Um, and we're going to get one more scripture. Hold on. Okay, so this is the book of Luke, chapter 11, verse 23. The Lord says, Yahweh Shai says, He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth. He said, Hey, if you're not with me, you're you're with Babylon over here, man. And that's what these people are doing right now. These Israelites. I'm talking to these Israelites right now. That's anybody that has not repented to the Lord and turned to seek his face. Because uh, in doing that, you're gonna know who your enemies are, you're gonna know what time it is, you're gonna know. Uh, to watch out for the Lord's return, to get yourself together, to get your mind right. But anybody that's not doing that is just going to be uh, trapped up in this system, trusted in this system, just just as the scriptures have said. Okay. Um, so now we're gonna um, we're gonna about to we're about to wrap it up. We're gonna close it out. I got one more scripture for the Edomites. Okay. But that all that was just based on for the Israelites just now. You know, just he with an ear, let him hear. Let them know it's time to repent and turn turn back to seek the face of the Lord, man, before it's too late. Because this is just madness out here with these people doing these things like this. And like the other brothers brought out, if the shoe was on the other foot, there ain't nobody going to be fixing uh, a, a, a defender's hair. You know what I'm saying? It's, it, it would be just um, a lot of uh, tension in the room, for one. Shoot. So, you know, it's just unjust laws, man. It's just not right. It's, it's just it's upside down let's get let's go 14 days 14 days mm -mm -mm. let's turn to the book of Amos chapter 1 verse 11 thus said the Lord for three transgressions of Edom and for four I will not turn away the punishment thereof because he he did pursue his brother with the sword and did cast off all pity and his anger did tear perpetually and he kept his wrath forever. So that's the judgment on Esau Edom, man. The Lord's going to come and get you. And we're sighing and crying and, and telling on y'all. We're telling on Esau Edom for all the abominations they're doing and all the unjust uh, decrees and laws that they're setting against the children of Israel, man. We're going to go to the book of uh, Second Ezra. Chapter 6, verse 7. You know everybody like this one. We're going to end it off on this, okay? Then answered I and said, What shall the parting asunder of the times? 
And when shall the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth? And he said unto me, From Abraham to Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau, for Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So not too much longer, man. We have to endure all of these heartaches and and um, and unjust and unrighteous decrees, man. That is set forth uh, against the children of Israel. You know we don't have to be looked down upon no more, or uh, you know just treated illy, because the Lord's gonna set things back in order the way it should be. Um, so with that, I just wanna give all honors and praises to Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Uh, Hashem Rakakadash. I want to give double honors to the elders and, and apostles of Great Millstone. And salutations to all the hopefully elect out there that's pushing the word in truth and sincerity. Alright, good night everybody. Shalom.